Something that's made the past year way easier, being a longtime user of HelloFresh. It's America's number one meal kit for a reason, and now is the best time to find out why. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Woo-hoo! Whoa. What was that? I mean, I was, I was vibing. I was, I'm feeling good over here. Welcome into the show. And now I'm, now I'm like ready to run through the wall. I try to supply a little bit of energy from time to time. I feel like Jason's denying the supply in right now. Oh no, no. Get in on this. No, I am I am amped <laughs> with you guys. I'm just experienced I'm reveling. I'm 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 marveling in the energy that has been brought to this table. I'm just happy to be here. Well, it, it was a pre lunch introduction to the show, which sometimes I'm not gonna say that we're always <laughs> metabolizing when we record this show. But I am always metabolizing <laughs> from four to five hours post meal. I, you did uh, give me some of those protein chips before the show, Mike. Maybe, we did. We did, did get it going. Up. I don't know what's in them. We powered up. Plant based. They're oh, we went Brady style. It doesn't taste good enough for it not to be. <laughs> I mean, it has to be good for you a little right. bit. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, welcome into the fantasy footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Back with you. Twitter at the FF Ballers. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. Jason at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. On Twitter, thefantasyfootballers.com is the website. You can check out the player profiles. Lots of tweaks and polish and upgrades happening this offseason. And we're very, very excited. Um, just this season, we've done a lot of expanding in terms of dynasty content, dynasty articles, the DF, or I'm sorry, the ultimate draft kit now has the UDK Plus, which has the dynasty pass. And for those of you that are Many of you are like us. You play in some redraft leagues. You play in some keeper leagues. You play in some dynasty leagues. Some of you are, are just dynasty degens. Like, you mm -hmm. just live. Yes. For, and, and you vilify the redraft world. You vilify the keeper world. They're, fools. You're not all in 52 of us. Devi leagues? Exactly. Come, come at me, bro. But you should be excited because we have, oh. we have some dynasty stuff coming up. We have a dynasty week that we're going to be uh, just... Breaking out right after the NFL draft. We need a jingle or something. We uh, we're working on that too. Yeah. Well, I mean, like cause the, the megalodon. I mean, you're kind of the jingle guy. Every, every well, every time you send megalodon, it's, it sends Jason to a into a, <laughs> into a, a growling frenzy. Yeah, it's a little scary actually. Yeah. So we got to figure out what the the hook is. What is for dynasty? Yeah, I agree with you, Andy. We'll talk. Uh, we'll Andy and I will talk to our medley guy. Okay. Yeah. Which am I invited is to you? the meeting? Yeah, yes. which is you. <laughs> Uh, so we do have a Dynasty Week coming up. We're also going to be doing some uh, some other Dynasty stuff on the show, segments, uh, making sure that you out there that, that are into Dynasty Leagues are staying up to date with what's happening and how drafts are changing. And there's so much on the table right now with the NFL draft. Rookie breakdowns are coming very soon. And then, you know, after the draft, you have all of the rookies and their new destinations, but then you have a whole... Uh, huge amount of players that were affected by these rookies coming into their depth charts to mess things mm -hmm. up. So get that collateral damage. Yeah, yeah, it's true. All right, ultimatedraftkit.com. You can head over there, check out that UDK UDK Plus. I think it's time for some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. I don't like this one. No, I don't either. I don't, uh, like, I don't like this one. Melvin Gordon. Boo. Buy yourself 1,300 total yards in 2021. Mm. So just for context, five years in Los Angeles, or I guess it was San Diego. Um, he went over 1,300 total yards in 2016, 17, and 18. Man, 2018. Yes. 1,375 yards in just 12 games. And then... In 2019, 12 games, 900 yards. Last year in Denver, sharing the field with Philip Lindsay, missed a game, 1,144 yards, but just 158 receiving yards, which was the lowest of his career. 
So buy yourself 1300 There is a direct correlation with an absence of P. River. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Phillip Rivers, that'll happen to your receiving yards. That's true. But does it continue? I mean, was this something that... Yes, it, it will continue because Drew Locke will be the starting quarterback for the Broncos for at least the majority of the season, I believe. I did see a mock draft yesterday. was looking oh. at some of these NFL mocks. And who did they take? Justin Fields. Justin Fields at nine. What kind of I crazy know. mock draft is sending hey, Justin Fields They Lewis are happening, and Jason made a good point well, yesterday. Listen, I, I remember when it was supposed to go uh, Baker and Darnold and Rose and one, two, three. Every mock had teams trading up, and then, you know, you got guys dropping down to 10, and teams trade up for them. These things happen. Now, Fields shouldn't get to nine in in my uh, analytical opinion. However, if it happened, I, I could see something like that happen, and we can all, we can all hope. For Denver to get a better Trey quarterback. Lance went ahead of him in this month. What? I know, but... What? I, Stop. If, if you have a certain team that likes a certain player... Was this doodoomock.com? Like, if you, like for example, Chicago, if you fall in love with a guy like Mitch Trubisky, you take your guy. A lot of these GMs do that. But, but... Yeah. Trubisky was a one-year wonder, too, right? Yeah. If I remember that correctly. Yes, correct. At, at Let's NC. circle back, though. Melvin okay. Gordon, 1,300 yards, buy or sell. He has uh, Mike Boone... Behind him, Royce Freeman behind Royce him. Royce Freeman is still there. That's one of his best qualities. <laughs> he's he's made it, man. He's I think this is if the last year of his If you're still there in the deal. NFL, you did it. I'm, yes. I'm going to jump in here first because right. I, I don't know where you two are going to land on this, but I, I'm firmly on the buying of 1,300 total yards. I do not see a world where he is utilized as poorly in the passing game as this last season. That is, to me, the baseline for his – passing down work obviously it's going to take a, a step down from good old Philip Rivers but um, with Philip Lindsay gone and him uh, you know I don't think Mike Boone is coming in and going to take over anything um, so I think Melvin Gordon has the opportunity to really be what they're paying for which is a, a lead primary dog in the backfield and um, uh, I, I am you know look I'm one to win on any uh, situation possible mistake uh cheating if not caught you know yeah uh, right right, right. Uh, there are 17 games going there are going to be 17 uh, games played next yes. year and i'm taking 1300 okay. yards now were you when you're saying that the receiving work is going to get better are you factoring in the lack of philip Lindsay, like taking his production and giving that to melvin gordon um so I, I well, he wasn't really utilized in the passing game that much either. But I do that was think the, that was the trap, do you, right? Do you, know how many, <laughs> you know, I, do you know how many receiving yards Philip Lindsay had in 2020? Uh, I don't know, but obviously, I mean, I know, I know he was not involved in the passing. How many more game. traps you got, Mike? The answer is seven reception for seven receptions. I'm sorry for. 28 yards. No, I think if it's that low, the proper grammar is seven reception. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Seven reception for 28 yard. So go ahead and give, <laughs> go ahead and give Gil, uh, Melvin Gordon the Listen, 28 yards. Well, but here, here's the thing. if it, It's not a matter of just uh, you giving him those stats. It's a matter of what snaps he's on the field for that he might be able to, you know, do something more with it. My, my point was that Drew Locke doesn't throw to the running back. He just doesn't do it. What's incredible is Melvin Gordon has won season above a thousand rushing yards in his career in six years yeah it's kind of shocking i will sell it i think they will use other backs enough for melvin gordon to fall just short of this number that being said i am impressed with what denver's done this off season the new gm john elway's out of there to the sidelines got an upgrade uh, what is a promotion Away yeah, from yes, the GM. Elway promoted himself out of the, yes. the GM position. But if <laughs> I, I want to bring this data up. If Jason's uh, right, and, and I don't know Mike's answer yet, but he bought 1,300. Over the last five seasons, 53 times there's been a running back that goes over 1,300. In two-thirds of those, they had double-digit touchdowns. Yeah, that so makes sense. So if he hits that number, it's very likely he is a significant factor in fantasy football. Mike, buy or sell. I will sell. Dun, dun, dun. I will sell. I think Royce Freeman will will see an uptick in work, and and Mike Boone is not. Mike he's Boone no is, slouch. Yeah, exactly. He's he's not like this dirt. Like Mike Boone can get it done. On he the can field. get seven reception for twenty eight yard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that number is mind blowing. 
How do you not throw to Philip Lindsay more? Like those the first two years in the league, he had thirty five receptions each time. Really? Yes. Wow. So he was nothing last year. Oh man, Drew Locke is the problem. Yes, and I I, I completely agree with that. I I don't think he's going to get worse this season. Um, <laughs> but you know, I don't you never I, know. I think I don't think he's going to fix you know the the real overarching problem, which is him at quarterback. His, his Lockness. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. There'll there's be a, there's there, no there, key coming. <laughs> no, I get it. Oh, to the mm, lock. Very mm. nice. Yeah. Well, right. isn't what? Nice. That was their, a good one. Their defense is going to be better. I imagine they want to lean on Melvin Gordon. It'll be close. I yeah. think he's he's well over 1,000, so should be neat. All right, that was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction. Guys, have you ever heard of Pristine Auction? Uh, no, dot no, com. No, please tell me more. Dot com. That's their web address. And you can use our code BALLERS, and you get $10 off sports memorabilia. That's right. Autographed, authentic, certified, like, verified. Like my champion, Antonio got, Gibson, on yeah, the wall. We do have Antonio Gibson up on the wall. You do love him. Oh, I do. All right, let's uh, get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Can we can we title this the leftovers? Yeah, sure. that's appropriate. Do you, ever, you ever watch that show on HBO? I did watch that show. That I did not. show is great. It was really really good. It got soups Ooh, weird. At I the don't end. know. We we had a great to really good. That's it was great different. in the beginning. No no but no. I'm they, with Jason on this. It got a little weird at the end. Yeah, they first couple a seasons too were early. And then how many like, are there? Like, three seasons. I think three. Yeah. So did it feel like a show where it was it was going to be a one season show? No, it feels like a show that was going to be a five yes. season show, and then the third season they're like, "Yeah, we're getting rid of it," and they're like, "Okay, Hurry up and finish. Hurry, here we hurry. go." So it's like the opposite Prison Break. It was like Prison Break year one. Oh, they had to extend. Was it. sensational, but it was written to be a yeah. one season show, and but then it got ratings. So of course, yeah, you got to extend it. We're, we need three more. All right, leftovers. Mike Davis. Running back, formerly of the Panthers, two-year, $5.5 million contract with? Not the Arizona Cardinals. The Atlanta Falcons. This could be very significant or very insignificant. insignificant. We have to see what the Falcons are going to do in the draft. But as it stands today, Mike Davis is going to be the starting running back for the Atlanta Falcons. Is that, isn't that a little presumptuous? They, they like Dito Smith. I... It is not presumptuous. I will presume. I I will move forward with the current depth chart that Mike Davis is sitting at the top. Todd Gurley's out. Brian Hill is also a a free agent. We saw what Todd Gurley was able to do uh, as toast, but still scoring a whole bunch of touchdowns because it's the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan's a good quarterback. They're a good offense. So touchdown opportunity is there. We know that Mike Davis has a three-down skill set before last year, but really showed it off as – he. He was he had to be counted on when Christian McCaffrey went out. Uh, so it, like, if he is moving forward as the starter, if the Falcons don't do anything else, Davis will be an interesting third or fourth round pick. Yeah, he 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 would be. But if you're playing in Dynasty and right now you've got to make decisions based on what the true expectation of the future is. I would not expect Mike Davis to be the starter. He wasn't paid significant starter money. And with the capital that the Falcons have, if uh, because of that restructure, I think there's a, a good chance they trade down from four. And if they trade down from four, they're sure. going to get a haul of picks, which allows them to draft one of the, the three main running backs this season. Okay. Edo Smith just stays around. Stays around. Like four. Royce Freeman style. Yeah. Uh, not a lot to be excited about right now in the backfield in Atlanta. Um, my, look, I, Mike Davis will be very interesting if he is actually there with Edo Smith. James White, one-year contract to return to the Patriots. All right. Damian Williams. This is a big one. Not because it's Damian Williams. It's a one-year deal with the Bears. He's going to get work. He is. David Montgomery was... Uh, uh, very mediocre for fantasy for the first half, maybe two thirds. I can't remember how when the breakout really happened, but then you know you had the injury early to uh, uh, Tariq Cohen. Then Montgomery's passing down work went up naturally, and then the end schedule was so friendly for David Montgomery that 
he was great. I mean, David Montgomery turned into a league-winning type of fantasy football player. He absolutely smashed. Well, he was on the James Robinson plan, which yes. was every snap, every down, all yes. game long. And such a against good plan. and against very poor rush defenses that turned into fantasy gold. And you can't take anything away from him. Correct. He did everything you wanted him to do, and I think because of the work that he did, he's going to be seen in a light even by the the team and the organization to – as as a as a, founda a foundational piece of their offense. However, to speak to the Tariq Cohen injury, you know he got injured, uh, you know midway through week three. And those first three weeks of the season, David Montgomery was the running back thirty seven seven and thirty nine. So it was not great those first three weeks right. utilization. And now they bring in someone with a skill set that can catch the ball. So I I do think this has a uh, real negative impact on David Montgomery. I guess my reaction to it was that it was kind of like, duh. Like, they're not – the depth right. chart that they had now was not going – it's not like Cordero Patterson wasn't being rotated through. They they had to pick somebody else up for it's this like, team. And is Damian Williams – does he represent a different-than-I-expected threat to the backfield? And my answer is no. It's not on a one-year deal. It's identical to the Carlos Hyde situation. You knew James Robinson was not going to be the only uh, player there. And so you hope that – they bring in someone old busted, and it's just a question of do you believe that Carlos Hyde or Damian Williams are old busted? And I lean that they are not, that they've still got some juice left for this year in their respective backup role. What is the – circling back to the Mike Davis move for a split second here, because uh, uh, Joe Flacco also signed, and that's the last bit of news that we have. And we what just is covered the, it. the Eagles. What is the depth uh, – yeah, just sign. Um, <laughs> He's somewhere. Who cares? Sign with the NFL – with a one-year NFL deal. What's the depth chart right now in Carolina with Mike Davis departing? Because, I mean, you have mm, Christian Reggie, McAfee returning. I believe Reggie Bonifon is – Oh, uh, Super Bonifon? Super Bon Bon <laughs> um, is under contract, but I'll vet that. Okay. So we're doing the same dance this offseason with – they probably will say they want to add somebody for Christian McCaffrey and – Sure. I mean, if you're doing... Uh, I mean, Mike Davis being able to carry the load, like Reggie Bonifon can't carry the load. It, it's Christian McCaffrey's backfield, obviously. Yes. Yeah, 100% it'll be McCaffrey. Yeah, Bonifon is under contract for 2021. Okay. We have uh, a game that we're going to play. We're going to play some Liar Liar. Before we do that one... Are we? No, no, that's not a lie. Oh, okay. yeah, That's the truth. We don't, we're not playing Just yet. trying to win early. We're not, we're not playing quite yet. Uh, but we do want to thank today's sponsor, Manly Bands. Oh, yeah. Which I am, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm holding it up. I've got my Manly Bands on. I switched, so manly. I switched over to this Manly Bands uh, six, eight months ago mm -hmm. when we got connected with them. Um, They're sweet looking. Our significant others, they've been the ones generally fantasizing about the perfect wedding ring. I remember when I got mine, it was like... Uh, I'll take what you got. I don't. I didn't even. You just pointed. Do you have a ring in a brown paper bag? <laughs> well, they all kind of seem the same too, and that's what Manly Bands is working to fix. And they're ta they're saying goodbye to the uh, hellish band buying experience. Yeah. And they have some crazy bands. Listen to this. Gold. Okay, that's normal. We know they have gold band. Get a nice gold band. What if you want one? with wood inside or antler or steel or dinosaur bone dinosaur or, bone. or even meteorites that's so awesome dinosaur. you could get superpowers from that can't you, you a meteorite i think so to order your manly band oh, and treat get yourself 21 percent off 21 percent off plus <laughs> they said 20 nay nay 21 what is this 2020 <laughs> no no that's a good point uh 21 percent off plus a free silicone ring Go to manlybands.com slash footballers. That's manlybands.com slash footballers. Code is footballers for 21% off Manly Bands, the best rings, yeah. period. Upgrade your ring game, man. All right. We ready to play a game of Liar Liar? Let's, Let's go. go. Liar Liar. Pants on fire. Footballers edition. All right, we play this on the Spitballers podcast. Uh, it is essentially two truths and a lie. And today, now, Brooks, are we battling the lies of the Borgogan? You sure are. Oh, he's dastardly. Yeah. So today we are playing three rounds, two truths and a lie, with some fantasy stats and facts and things of that nature and lies. 
You guys ready? I don't want to lose to Kyle. No. I don't like him. Yeah, no. Losing does. to somebody you don't like feels bad, man. Yeah, because this happened a lot to Al Borland, mm -hmm. uh, or we've lost to Al Borland on the Spitballers. So Kyle needs to go down. His pictures on the graphic. Oh, come on! Gross. Get out of here. Ugh. Look at that ugly, ugly man. All right. We love you, Kyle. Round one. Sometimes you can't think of a better insult. Then so just, you, you just repeat. Yeah, yeah. Ugly, ug because, ugly look, man. Ugly. It works. Uh -huh. It gets the point like, done. Like, really ugly. <laughs> I mean, you say, can see. We put him on the graphic. Like I had to say it twice. He's yeah, so we totally did that. Hideos. Um, all right. Here we go. Round one. Fact number one. Patrick Mahomes has more pick sixes in his career then Daniel Jones, Gardner Minshew, Brock Osweiler, Drew Locke, and Mitchell Trubisky combined, which would be one. Patrick okay. Mahomes has one, according to this stat. This seems like the kind of stat that Kyle would find. He just starts searching for pick six lists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm buying this one because there's okay. two truths, one lie. I'm it's buying it. It's so tough to think that Trubisky has not thrown a pick six. That's true. That's a problem. Andrew Locke, and Brock Osweiler, and Gardner Minshew, and Daniel Jones. All right. Here's the second fact. Rookie Justin Herbert has more passing touchdowns in the NFL than Cam Newton's last three seasons combined. That one seems true because now, this last year he had almost nothing. He, he was had, injured. And then he was injured two years ago. I, I think yeah. this one's got to be true. I can't remember. Three years ago, Cam Newton. Yeah, that would be 2018 through 2020. All right, that seems true. And in the third one, in 2020, Kirk Cousins had as many games with three or more passing touchdowns as Deshaun Watson and Lamar Jackson combined. I don't think he had that good of a year. He had a good Cousins? year. Cousins? I don't think he had – well, I'm saying that good that he would have surpassed Watson and Lamar Jackson. Well, it's just it, – I know that Kirk Cousins was in the mid-30s. For touchdowns. He threw a lot of them. Everyone threw a lot of touchdowns this yeah, year. Yeah, but Watson had a nice year. But, it's but games a lot of them. Three or more. And it's passing touchdowns, yeah. right? Well, because just, Watson oh, and Lamar good catch there. had passing touchdowns. A lot of multi touchdown games. I'm sure they had games with three touchdowns, oh, but how many were no. rushing? Yeah, okay. So I'm going to say that I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I'm going you seem to. You so confident. I, I did for a moment, but. I, we're used to the Spitballers podcast where Jeremy is absolutely excellent at these. We've, he's, we've never gone 3-0 and against them. I imagine Kyle's not good. Well, if I, I'm going to imagine he is good, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say number one is, is the lie. Ooh, you're getting that Trubisky. Uh, Trubisky, I can't, <laughs> I can't take you, that you Trubisky has never that. thrown a pick six. So you're believing that the Justin Herbert stat and the Kirk Cousins stats are right. Mike, yeah. I'm going to let you go next because I'm not sure where to go. Had as many games. Oh, my goodness. So you think the Mahomes one is a lie. I believe I'm going to take the Kirk Cousins one. I'm going to say that one is the lie. Well, I'm actually going to go with number two is the lie. All so right. we're, one okay. of us All is right. making it through okay. unscathed. What is the prop? What is the right answer, Brooksy? The lie is number two. Oh, oh. man. Justin so, Herbert has one fewer than Cam Newton over yeah, that time right. period. Okay. So I, I couldn't remember Cam Newton three years ago. So that means that Mahomes does have more pick sixes. One. One in his I mean, career. So no pick sixes for pick Daniel six Jones, is Gardner, and difficult. Not for Trubisky. I mean, I know he hasn't done it, but I feel like he, yeah, he's I never got did. the skills to pull that off. When I was quarterback for flag football, I never threw any of those. <laughs> I don't. Well, you threw it. Interceptions are going to happen. One but, per game, right? But a, but a pick six is like it, it takes a very particular set of circumstances <laughs> for the defender to catch it while running. And oh, so Kirk Cousins more three touchdown or passing touchdown games than Watson and Lamar. Okay, had more burst games apparently. Round two, here we go. Allen Robinson hasn't been the number one fantasy wide receiver in any week <laughs> since the Obama administration. <laughs> Wow. That's oh. an excellent. If it's a lie, it's excellent. Yeah. If it's true, it's excellent. Well crafted. Yeah. The number one fantasy. See, that's it's true. Allen Robinson doesn't do that. 
in current it, with his current circumstances. He, he doesn't give he you missed a whole year. He's had two with the Bears. But I mean that you're going five years, right? Four four and a half years. Yeah, something like that. Uh, in 2020, here's the second number or stat. In 2020, there were 160 different wide receivers that saw at least 10 targets. Michael Gallup was the only one who did not have a single reception in the slot. Ooh. Ooh. I buy it. I Ooh. buy that. Michael Gallup on the outside. Michael. I don't think I've seen him even come near the slot. Yeah, CeeDee Lamb was the, the real slot king for the Cowboys. And then the third one, since 2017, four seasons, old man Larry Fitzgerald has more top five fantasy weeks than Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, I'm buying that. <laughs> just, and I'm just loving because. it. Yeah, uh, so that's four seasons, and that's the lie. You think four that's seasons. the lie? I'm going to lock it in. I think number three is the lie. I think Allen Robinson, that one's great. I think it's true. And then I think the Michael Gallup one is true. I don't, I've never seen him even sniff that part of the field. I Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah. Ex excellent dodge. Yeah. Excellent dodge. We were going down a, a bad, yeah. bad road. That part of the field. <laughs> Darn right. So I'm locking in number three is the lie. What do you guys want to do? I totally believe uh, number three. Odell Beckham was drafted in 2014. Is that is that correct? That's my memory. Don't look at me. Um, I believe that is true. If that's true and you got those first couple years of dominance out of the way, um, I'm going to, I'm going to believe that's true. Um, I'm going to say Michael Gallup hit the slot. Okay. That's I mean, just lie. one. He all he's, he's just got to be there once. I know Kyle. I'm gonna I'm gonna get this one right. Mike, what's your what are you locking in? I. You guys both gonna be wrong again, or are you gonna go with mine? Mm, <laughs> fine, <laughs> fine. I see what's going on here. I will go with number one. I will take Allen Robinson. Uh, has not been a number one fantasy wide receiver in a week. In the last four years. The number one. The, yeah, okay. yeah, the. All right, what is the right answer here, Brooksy? The lie is number three, oh. Larry Fitzgerald and Odell Beckham Jr. They had the same number. I believed in you, Jason. Yeah, I'm feeling They pretty... had the same. See, here's the thing with, with see, I'm Kyle. See, I'm in the mind of Kyle right now. Yeah, you, you are. But see, when, when Jeremy comes up with a lie, ugly. Jeremy just makes up a full lie. When Kyle yeah. comes up with a lie, he's like, I'm going to take this, and it's one off. Footballers yeah. edition. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, dirty. That's lying and cheating. There was just no way. You're dirty cheating liar. There, there was no way that Larry Fitzgerald got into the top five. He might not have a top five. He literally he said is tied. tied with Odell Beckham. Oh, like, is that the answer? That's yeah. what I'm saying. This lie is like. Okay. I missed that part. I was too busy gloating. All right. Round three. Well, you better. Yeah. You better get a to knock time. him out of the park. All right. Wow. These are uh, very wordy. These are wordy. Number one. Since entering the league in 2005, Ryan Fitzpatrick has played in 165 career games, and yet our hairy-chested <laughs> hero has never played in an NFL game against the Green Bay Packers or the Buccaneers. Really? Okay. So he played for the Buccaneers. So I mean that yeah. that could that could make sense. I know that, and this is a he's never played in the Packers division, has he? On any of those yeah, teams? He's, he's never been a Viking. Never been a Bear. I I believe that. I, I know that Kyle has been doing a, an entire write-up uh, that I'm super excited to read on Ryan Fitzpatrick. I believe these are all, all three of these are Ryan Fitzpatrick facts. Yeah, well, one of them is going to well, be yeah, like one, yeah, one digit of, off. Yeah. All right, number two. When Fitz, you're very bitter. Uh, when Fitzpatrick was drafted in 2005, he was the 14th and final quarterback off the board in the seventh round at pick 250. Of the 255 players selected, Fitzpatrick is the only draft pick left currently on an active NFL roster. Mm. So it would be the last remaining 2005 draft pick, right? Yeah. Okay, I can believe that. Okay. Yeah, maybe. This is like, there's two. He, he there's, was drafted at pick 252. Yeah, there's two different mm. facts in that bullet, so I don't think that's the lie. Yeah. That may, Okay. I'm not sure I want to listen to you, but okay. you could be right. Number three, Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic, has thrown for 34,977 passing yards. This is impossible. Thus far in his illustrious career. That is the same exact distance from the footballer studio to State Farm Stadium. This is impossible. Where the Arizona Cardinals play. That's yards. So what is that? Uh, 
I'm not doing the math. Five thousand two hundred and eighty yeah, feet in a mile time, times three, and then put that it that could miles. be true. It sounds this is plausible. The, but come on. Also, Kyle's got a lot of time on his hands. Yeah, we gotta we gotta get him working on. I now I have a lot of pressure because I want you do to whoop him. I'll, I'll get mine out of the way. I'm locking it. It's impossible. It's number yeah, three. I'm, it's I'm, just it's I'm too right, impossible. I'm right there with you, Mike. I'm. Is that I'm not in Kyle's head. <laughs> Like Andy is, so I will. Uh, I will lock in number three because. So you both think that one's a lie. Well, it's stupid. It's impossible. So I'll go with the stupid one. Michael, go with the impossible Same one. Same exact distance. That is tough because then you're down to it's the actually, to the feet. He threw for thirty-four thousand nine hundred ninety-six. <laughs> Kyle, man, I am bitter. You're you're yeah, right. You're, you're upset. I do not are like you get, losing. Are you getting hangry? Oh, that's oh true. it's we have pretty lunch. lunch. <laughs> mm. Are you getting hangry? You don't want to see me angry. <laughs> Um, so just to stay here for a second, Fitzpatrick, the, the 2005 one, how many years is that? The 16 years? Somebody else from 2005 has to be around, right? Not necessarily. No, no, no. That's not the one. The, 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 uh, oh yes. It, that's the one that you said has two facts in it. Right. I don't think he's trying to lie about him being the 14th and final quarterback off the board. That's correct. I'll jump that, in and say okay. that. Yeah, the first that's part absolutely of that right. So correct. the lie would be if he was the only draft pick left I mean, good for, on an active passion. NFL roster. Now, wait a minute. Did good Brooks just give it away? No, I I think he was just trying to clarify. Yeah, mm -hmm. that it wasn't a, a gotcha. Now, now, is there a numbers game to be had here? What I'm was switching my pick to number two. The, lie, the lie was one, three, and would, would Kyle give us the lie on two? So you have the lie is each of the numbers. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh I like okay. it. I'm a little, I don't think he would. I think he'd double this up. This is what, I mean, fantasy football is a game, and you gotta, you got to play the yeah. game. And uh, we, we love to beat games. <sighs> Man, do I go with you guys on number three? I'm not on it. No, he's I'm, on I number switched. two now. If I, you switch to number yeah. two as the lie? That's right. I'm gonna go with number one. I think he's probably played against the Packers. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Here's, here, before Brooks reveals this, yes, great work, everybody, because we got the lie. At least one of us got mm -hmm. every single lie. That's right. Okay. So this this is a unanimous. Kyle lost. Victory. No matter what. Kyle to, lost. Together yeah. we take won. that. I'll go. Oh, let's <laughs> see what happened. All right, what happened? The lie is number two. Oh, oh. I knew Brooks gave it away. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Rodgers is the other player. That's on an active roster. Yeah. So dumb. Yeah, because he's the only way he would know that one part of that was what he was going for is if it was the lie. Yeah, I don't know about that. So you are telling me, but I should have thought about somebody like no, Aaron Rodgers. We, we really screwed get, that one up. No, get that crap out of the way. We are the exact oh, current yeah. Ryan Fitzpatrick passing yardage from the stadium. From the stadium, right this moment. But what if we're like at the front of the studio? Well, <laughs> I think I think the general that is impossible. That is, how do you even find something like that? At what point, Kyle, does Kyle? Why does Kyle even look there? Like he goes, hmm, thirty-four thousand nine seventy-seven. That sounds live, like the he, amount of yards. He doesn't live in this state. Like, and to even look that up, this is why he's the editor in chief. To me, that means he must have started this category of liar, liar with this one. And it had to have begun with like which quarterback. He was looked it? at the yards from the stadium to our. That's where you start. You look at the yards between the stadium and us right now, and then you find a quarterback that matches. And he's like, "Oh goodness gracious, it's Ryan Fitzpatrick." But the fact that anything is that any quarterback has the exact yardage is just mind blowing. Okay, well, um, hit it. I'm gonna try to. You want me to get it? Yeah. Breaking news. All right, we have a, an update. The Colts are re-signing T.Y. Hilton, a move that their fans have been waiting for. Uh, One-year deal. Yep, I think it's the right thing to do as okay. the Colts. Yeah, they did not have a lot of pass-catching weapons. You had Pittman, who is still a complete question mark. as to you know He showed some flashes of greatness, but didn't do a lot, wasn't good with the deep ball. And then, of course, you've, you've got to supply weapons. For Carson Wentz, uh, you, you you trade for him. Mm -hmm. You want to set him up to succeed. So it makes sense to bring T.Y. Hilton back. I'm still reeling from not beating Kyle. I am sorry. We banded together you know and what? beat him. I, That's I, a victory. Yeah. I, I was going to go with number two, but I really didn't think he would do the thing where the lie is one, three, two. Mm. Eh, now you know. All right. Uh, let's jump into the mailbag. 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 
Visit the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. By the way, the article that Jason was talking about, it's 25 Ryan Fitzpatrick facts to make you rethink your life. That and last one will makes me yes. rethink my life. And that's on the website. So let's jump into now, a... Do you think, just real quick... Kyle actually won the FSWA award for article of the year yes. across the fantasy football industry this past season. Is that why he wrote this? Is he going for back-to-back -back articles of the year? Yeah, I think when uh, once the the panel reads this current Fitzpatrick one, he will back-to-back -back it. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to rethink their lives. It's true. Let's go to a voicemail question. What is the best transaction you've ever made? While on the crapper. Oh. While on the oh, crapper? Okay, okay. Also, I thought I was right in the middle of a ransom video. I mean, <laughs> sure. I was scared. My heart. I was like, where do I put the money? Yeah. My so the first part of that was too distorted when he said his name, where he's from, but I had to get that question. <laughs> I believe I that wonder. was Batman from Gotham. I need it. I need it again. Yeah. Let's get that. What is the best transaction you've ever made while I'll on the crapper? You. While on the crapper. Um, All of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have your children. Um, I don't know what the best trans. Mo what percentage of your? Let's say, ask that question. What percentage of your transactions are on the crapper? Not very. Not many. not many of the transactions. The news, the looking up. You know what's going on. Maybe looking at the the activity of the league. But when you got to have focus on what is the best transaction <laughs> you've ever made. You've got to have a, on the a focus. <laughs> the timing of his delay yeah. is so incredible. That's <laughs> great. I, I forgot. The third time I forgot that he was going to keep talking with on the crapper. <laughs> um, well, what's our best transaction? What's just the one that, that, you know, looking back, we're like, thank goodness the best Wires trade you ever made? Yeah. Oh, I can't ever I can't remember like a trade I've ever made. I've made a hundred, I've made good ones, bad ones, great ones, terrible ones, and I can't remember the only one I can remember is 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 terrible. I always bring up an older one with Arian Foster and 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 that was a good trade. Or not Arian Foster, I'm sorry. D'Angelo Williams. D'Angelo Williams. I'll bring up one that I, I'm still very proud of in our dynasty league, and that was shipping out Todd Gurley mm -hmm. to pick up Dalvin Cook the year before his his kind of top consideration emergence. And so I was really, you know, I got a haul. I got Dalvin in like two number ones or something to get rid of Todd Gurley and timed it right. This could uh, go sideways, but I really enjoyed my trades at the end of last season in dynasty. I traded away again Todd Gurley. It's always great to trade. Todd Gurley, um, just in general, got some some picks and David Johnson and traded away Julio. Got uh, some picks and Ceedee Lamb. Oh, I also did a trade in that league where I gave up John Ross and I got Mark Andrews. That was one of my favorites. Now, uh, after you did that, the next two championships, who did they go to? The person <laughs> that you made that trade with, who was me? Oh, you overcame. The you overcame. Uh, the best transaction I ever made was in 2013. Did you look this up? Well, I, just, I wanted to look up the stats. I, I already knew the trade. I just wasn't sure what year it was. But it was 2013. Julio Jones was my wide receiver one. He went down after five games. And then there was all – like that was the news rapidly Rapidly was like, well, he might miss this week. He might miss – oh, Julio's out for the year. Mm. And I traded D'Angelo Williams, who was uh, back then on the Panthers. I traded him for Antonio Brown. Oh who boy! Turned into the wide receiver four that year, and then was my keeper because he was the best the next year, the best the next year, third the year yeah, after you, that. You held him forever. Yeah, it really, it really sucked. The fact that oh, like man, it was awesome. Antonio Brown had a stretch of complete dominance, and it was one hundred percent none of it <laughs> on your team alone for that that entire stretch. It was the worst. No question. I remember it, and I still have nightmares. All right, Taylor in Calgary, Alberta. Oh, bonjour. Big fan of the show from up north. Bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sure I got. which wide receiver I should keep for next season. Between Mike Evans or Ooh. Michael Thomas. Oh, that's a pretty easy a, one for me. Really? Okay. It is not for me. 
but I will go Michael Thomas. I will go Michael Thomas as well. He is the clear cut one. There aren't a lot of you know whatever what you. Is the best transaction <laughs> you've ever made. Wait Wall for it. On the crapper. Um, <laughs> Sorry, man. I had to. Oh, it's so good. But uh, you know, <laughs> so you're Michael Thomas. I am Michael Thomas. He he doesn't have competition for targets there, uh, despite Adam yeah. Troutman love from Mike. Um, and uh, you know, we with with Godwin uh, re-signing, I I think that I would take uh, pretty easily Michael Thomas. I lean that way too. All right, uh, Nick Farkas says keep Stephon Diggs in the fourth, or Justin oh. Jefferson in the twelfth. Oh, brother, what, what? Where's the softball questions? That's a softball for me. Really? Yeah, Justin Jefferson in the twelfth. Stephon Diggs ha can be the number one wide receiver. Yeah. I think Jefferson could be top five. Right. But the number at the end of the year, if you have the number five uh wide receiver that you kept in the twelfth, yeah, but or Diggs the is number not one, guaranteed to be the number no, one. No, he receiver. no, he is definitely not. But I think the chance of Stephon Diggs figure, uh finishing at the number one wide receiver, I believe, is greater than Justin Jefferson finishing as a top five. The, these were not very far apart players last year. Diggs was one twenty seven for fifteen thirty five. Oh, wait, 127? Never mind. Yeah. 88 for 1,400 for Jefferson. So yardage-wise, similar, not reception-wise, and then touchdown-wise, Diggs had him by one. I will take the fourth-round pick plus Jefferson. It's it's really, really close to me. I don't think this is a layup, but I agree. I will take the fourth-round plus Jefferson. If you look at wide receivers going in the fourth round, they are really, really quality wide receivers. Um, and so maybe you don't get the top-end talent, but I would rather have two – stud wide receivers um you know than just digs let's certify that though let's look at uh fourth round uh this is terry mclaurin mike this is yeah okay i mean alan robinson it's hard uh when you when you're just looking at names but when you back the question up and and remember it's okay you get a fourth and jefferson i guess i lean that way too then I, I don't blame anybody either direction, though. Yeah. You're right. I think it's it's pretty close. All right. Let's go to Instagram question from Sion Pickin. Says, mm. would you trade Melvin Gordon in the 109 rookie pick for Michael Thomas? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Without yeah. hesitating. All right. Yeah. I would yeah. hesitate a little bit if it was a, a two-quarterback league because that 109 becomes a pretty valuable pick in a super flex. Brandon Brockmeyer says from Twitter, keeper league question, Jonathan Taylor in the second round or Austin Eckler in the sixth round? Ooh. Austin Eckler in the sixth round. Yeah, same logic of Eckler plus a two or Johnny Taylor in a six. Here are I'm, some I'm names taking Austin Eckler. of running backs currently in the second round. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Which some of these guys may not be there because it's a keeper league. Uh, sure. Uh Antonio Gibson. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Well, well there's not, not a great list. You don't just have to go running backs, though. You sure. can go wide receiver. Sure. I, I guess if you do that, you've got Hopkins. You've got and basically whoever you Diggs want. Diggs and Ridley. Don in Michigan says, hey, ballers, love the show and the UDK. Oh, thank you. There are almost no Cardinals in Arizona. He's talking about the bird. Sure. I hear it is rare to ever see one in Phoenix. Has the show ever thought that uh, about using its popularity to try to change the Cardinals' name to something more associated with Arizona, or are all of you good with the team being called the I Cardinals? I love it not be. I don't want the scorpions and the cactus and the death of Arizona. I want the the plush life of the Cardinal from St. Louis. From and, Chicago. And also, yeah. also, I don't know if you two are privy to this if you've heard or seen what mr al borland and i have seen and he is an owl so he's got you know eyes for yeah. birds inside info but where we play pickleball th there has been uh, like every time we go out there a red-headed cardinal mm -hmm. right out there right where we're playing yeah now, now to, to be clear are there some non-red-headed cardinals i don't know because I, I thought the cardinal I, name really insinuated yeah. the the part that you yeah, specified the, like, there. Yeah, it's cardinal beautiful. red, it's red a headed part. cardinal red. Aren't they just red? Like the whole part of it? Yeah, the wait, they have they have some black, but I, I I've seen them around. I've seen like one. I've seen them around, and earlier on when I was a young wait. man. Oh. 
Breaking news. Jeremy, we we did not see a cardinal ever. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely only a redhead, and it looks Robin. like a cardinal. But as I'm looking at pictures of cardinals, they are entirely red. That is <laughs> most certainly. We've been seeing this bird out there every time. Not Thinking a cardinal. It's a cardinal. Nope. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, that tells you how much Arizonans know about cardinals, yeah. the yeah. actual bird. But I, I agree with my, or, uh, Jason. It, there are things that people love about the Southwest, and they come, they flock here for it. Mm -hmm. um, turquoise jewelry being one of the things that people yeah. are into. Oh, yeah, barf. Saguaro cactuses. Gross. Cacti. Cacti. Cac yeah. Cacti. Uh, no, I'm not arguing with you. That is factually <laughs> accurate. Um, you threw me off with your yard earlier. Oh, sorry. No, but but we don't, like when you live in the Southwest, you don't want Southwest things. Yeah. We should, yes, we'll change the name, but it's going to be something like polar bears. Just oh, another thing like that's it. not Another here. thing that's not from here that will make mm -hmm. us feel better about the weather. Yeah, we'll be the Arizona snow. <laughs> the snowflakes, yeah. That's an intimidating team out there on the field. All right, free agency winners and losers show coming up next week. And you can always get a bonus episode of the show over at jointhefoot.com. That'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. I guess we'll have to try to sweep Kyle another time in Liar yes. Liar. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.